and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Colourcraft brush -o. You may recall, those of you that have been watching my videos a while, that I did quite some time ago, probably about 18 months ago if, if not more than that, uh, one of my first ever videos was about using brush -o and how to use brush -o. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the link up here to that. But one of the reasons I wanted to revisit it was because in that video I show you how I use brush -o, taking the lid off and sprinkling it with a brush. Now, the reason I do it like that is because I feel like I've got a lot more control. But you will have noticed in my subsequent videos that I have put holes in the top of my pots just to sprinkle it straight out of the pot. So one reason for this really is because when I go and do workshops and things like that, um, it means that I can share my brush out, let other people use them and they just use a small amount um, tipping it out like that. Also, if I take it to a workshop and something and we take the lids off, it sort of you know increases the risk of it maybe being knocked over and it going everywhere, particularly where there are children involved. So it is a good idea to have some holes in the top of your brush out to use it in that way. So I still use it when in my own work when I'm doing something on a larger scale I still use it in the way that I described in that video. So for those of you that haven't seen that I'll show you that first of all. So I've got all my brush shows in this um, sweet tub. I don't know if you can see it's a Haribo one. Not, not advertising in any way. So, and I keep this little brush in there. Now this brush is just a very old uh, brush as you can see, but the main thing is I keep it dry. So it's, this brush is never wet. I always keep it dry and it's a nice soft one. And the way I use my brush hose is I always work onto wet paper or onto wet paint. Um, so I'll just spray a little corner of this paper with some water. And the way I use it, I actually spread that water out a bit, it's come off, come a bit thickly off, off the sprayer. Um, and the way I use it is by taking off the lid, this is ultramarine. You can see I've used quite a lot of that, it's uh, nearly empty. I put my brush in and then I knock off the excess so that I've just got a tiny amount of powder on the brush. And then I can be very delicate in where I'm putting it and be much more controlled than if you just sprinkle it straight from the tub itself. So I'll show you the difference actually. So I'll put the lid back on. I'll put some more water in this corner. I'll do the same thing as I did before because like I say it's come out quite thickly. That's just picked up some powder there. So if I want to put it in the same place, you can see how you're not having the same control. It comes out in fits and starts. So that's why I use this technique with the brush. But like I say, I've since used it a little bit like this, straight out of the pot. Because when I'm doing workshops, it means I can share them around. Other people can use them without risking the pots falling over and spilling it all. So I put these little push pins in to keep the powder in there. Now one thing I've found since I did that last video and since I've worked more with brush shows is that they're all, all the pigments are different sizes. Some are far, I'll try and open one or two and see if we can see actually. The ultramarine's a very fine one, that's quite a fine one. Some of them are a lot more granular, maybe the olive. Let's have a look at the emerald green. Whoops, so you can see it's gone everywhere taking the lid off. But can you see, it might not be easy for you to tell with the camera there, that, that those grains are not anywhere near as fine as those and certainly not as fine as the ultramarine. So you need different size holes in different um, pots for it to come out evenly. So as you can see, I've just put a hole in the middle because when they come, they've got an indentation in the middle. So I found it easy just to push that in. But since then... I've been watching various videos and things and I'm a member of Brusho Fun Group on Facebook. Now for those of you that are on Facebook and aren't aware of the Brusho Fun Group, I can highly recommend you go over there and have a look. Got a lot of members now. It's run by Michael and Jan who very kindly organised the group and it's great for sharing pictures that you've made just with your Brusho. So you'll find out lots of tips, lots of links, everything involved with Brusho. And one thing that Michael advised was because obviously it's a bit like with a pepper pot. Um, if you've got just put the one hole in, then you've nowhere else for the air to go in. 
and you you know whilst it, as the powder's coming out so how he does it and the reason i've chose to do this video today is because i've just bought two new pots i don't buy my brush shows in a set i buy them in individual colors because we have a little shop near us that sells them in individual colors so i could just pop in now again and again and treat myself to a different color so i've bought myself an alizarin crimson and a lime green can you see now how that's moved much more you've not got the control of the amount of powder that you're putting on by tipping it out so the alizarin crimson i'm going to hasn't got any holes in so i'm going to do it the way michael does it and this is the and give it a try and this is the way i would recommend that you uh, all do it and basically put three holes at one side to make it like a, a bit more like a say like a pepper pot so just using a pin and then really i think we need something to make that hole bigger so we've got the initial hole and then you put another hole at the other side to let the air in so you've got three at that side and one over there to let the air in rather than that one in the middle and i'll just go and find something now to make those slightly bigger okay so i've got a little tack it's one of the ones that came with some picture framing hooks um, so anything like that will do just to make them a little bit bigger once you've got that pilot hole and like I say it's really going to depend on the size of the pigment as to how big you need these holes might even not be big enough at that to be honest but we'll give it a try And we're going to have some nice colours here now where I've, I've spilt all that uh, green so we'll just put some extra water on and see if those yeah so those holes are big enough so we can see that it comes out much better than it does with just the one hole so let's compare to how the alizarin's come out see how it comes out sort of in lumps and bumps and not as evenly like we did here with the let's just put some more water on that the way that's a much better way of doing it so i'm really glad that michael gave me that tip so perfect really nice and what a lovely color that alizarin is i've not used that before uh, much more pinky than the other reds that i've got it's really nice that so now I'm going to go ahead and put some holes in this lime green and we'll come back and have a look at that colour, see what it looks like. So really now I'm not sure whether to, I think I might when I get time. So I've already got, these are ones I've had a long time and the thing about brush oil is they last a long time because you need such a little small amount. So I think with these what I'll do is because I've already got that hole there, I'll just put three extras there and tip it out to the side that way. Um, and I think we're going to get a much nicer um distribution of the colour than you do when you're just tipping out it out of that one central hole so i'm going to go ahead now and make some holes in this lime green and i'll be back with you in a moment okay so i've put some holes in the lime green there one thing i thought whilst i was doing it was to keep this out of the way you don't want that bit um where you're doing the tipping or on this side either it's so keep keep that to the side where you put your and just when you're deciding where to put your holes and we'll just see what this uh, oh it's quite yellow isn't it it's not much different oh it's starting to come some green out i'll just i don't know if you can see this end of the board let me just have a look yes you can so i'll just um put some water on there and see what color it comes out when it's just on its own so it's not well it's called lime green it's not dissimilar to the moss um, let's put some of the moss was it the moss or one of the other greens there's another green that comes out perhaps the emerald actually let's put the emerald into it yeah there's not a huge amount of difference in those greens really I was hoping that this one would be a bit more interesting so I'll put a bit up here and I'll just add some water to it and see what it looks like just as a uniform colour yeah it's not uh, not as exciting as I was hoping that lime green but I really do like this alizarin so yeah it's nice to treat yourself to some some new colors okay so I hope you found that useful that little tip of Michael's to do the um, 
holes in this way and I think it really does work well. I like the way that that alizarin all uh, went out into the water there. Okay, so and of course you can still use the, the brushes in the tr um, more traditional way, mixing them on your palette and using them like watercolours as well. I think what's quite nice is to do use them in a bit of a combination. So do a painting using them as like you would watercolours, mixing the colours on your palette and then sprinkling into them as well to get some of these nice effects. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you're not a member of the Brush o Fun group and you would like to be, just go on to Facebook and put uh, Brush o Fun group into the search engine and you'll soon find, find us there. And um, like I say, you can exchange pictures of the work that you've done with Brush o, whether you're a beginner or you're more advanced, whatever stage you're at, share them with other people, tell them how you've done your techniques and ask questions of other people how they've done things. Um, and exchange ideas and talk to people who like doing the same things as you do okay so if you have any comments if you want to put those down below and if you have any more questions about how to use brush you also put uh, those in the comments so this paper is just an SAA practice paper it's 140 pounds watercolor paper um, and the colors I used let's just think they were I've got on there ooh, all sorts now haven't we so the lime green the moss emerald green ultramarine and alizarin and sunburst lemon that has to be one of my favorites actually sunburst lemon it really i'll just uh, i'm waffling on now but it, if i just put a bit of this sunburst lemon into this piece that i've just put some water on you'll see how it uh, sort of pushes the other colors out of the way so if you if you're losing a little bit of light in your pictures you can soon get a little bit of light back by popping some of that lemon in it's a lovely, wonderful colour. You might not be able to see. I'll try and take a little bit of a close-up of that after it's dried a bit more and show you. I'll put those at the end. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. I know it's just a quick video today, but like I say, this is a really good way of doing it. I will still use my brush method because like I, say, I like to sort of really decide where everything's going. Um, but I will use, when I'm doing my vid YouTube videos and my workshops, I will use this um, method of having the three holes. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and bye for now.